Adidas Adios Pro 4. It looks so good and you probably want to know if it's actually good running in this shoe. And I'm going to tell you. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex. In today's video we have the very anticipated review of the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro 4. Let's just call it the Adios Pro 4. To make it a bit easier in this in this video, it's the Adizero franchise. This shoe was sent to us by Adidas and Top for Running and this video is in partnership with Top for Running. You will be able to find this shoe at Top for Running with code META M E T A early in 2025 and before that, we are giving away 3 pairs of Adios Pro 4 with Top for Running on Instagram. It starts on Sunday for the first pair and we'll give two more pairs later on in the fall season. So if you're interested to win one, that's the only chance you can have your hands on this shoe before 2025. It's on our Instagram at Meta Endurance. Let's go directly into it with the specs. We have 39 millimeters in the heel, 33 in the forefoot for that six millimeters drop. Men's US 9 sample size will be around 200 grams. My pair US 11 is at 224 grams. This is a dramatic weight reduction compared to the previous iteration, the Adios Pro 3. My pair was at 249, so 25 grams of difference um, compared to the previous iteration, so a weight reduction, a weight drop of 25 grams, which is um, always quite nice. Price point 250 euros, it's a good price point today for a top of the line race day shoe. Let's see if it's worth the money and if it's worth uh, buying this one over other um, top shoes. And um, yeah, if it is, then the, the price is actually quite good. Let's look into the upper. We have a one-way stretch um, woven upper. This is complicated words just to say that it's completely different compared to the Adios Pro 3. I did not like the upper of the Adios Pro 3. Many people had issues with the lacing pressure here on top of the foot and with the heel counter. The upper was quite abrasive, quite unpleasant against the foot. This is completely redesigned, completely different. It's actually a very pleasant upper. Uh, you don't really feel it on your foot. It's very discreet, very absent in a way, in a, in a good sense, but it provides with a good, um, good experience. The fit is true to size. I would recommend to go for your um, true to size uh, fit. Unlike the Evo one, which was running a bit short, this is definitely a true to size shoe for me. I have just enough space here in the in the forefoot that kind of half to up to you know maybe three quarter of a of a thumb uh, width in front of my big toe. So to me, this is a good shoe, especially if you're racing on half marathon marathon distances and your feet will swell a bit. You definitely need to have a bit more volume. And shoe to size is, in my opinion, the way to go with the shoe. The upper material very pleasant against the foot, like I said. The tongue is now padded. There is a large padding here at the top of the tongue. I feel like even without it, you would not have any lacing pressure thanks to the nice material and thanks to the way this upper is, is constructed. But this is also kind of to, you know, address and add a bit of a response to all the lacing pressure that people experienced in the previous iteration. Um, good job Adidas with this. There's the traditional uh, heel tab. On this one, you can read these two shall pass, um, which, you know, is a, I think a nice saying in the in the context of uh, running and kind of suffering on the, on the course. Um, the only concern I have, and this is after only two sessions in this shoe, is that I can already see some wear on the heel color. This color is, is made of a felt-like material. It's not a big deal, but you would expect this to happen after, you know, one year of using a shoe and not after only two sessions. Um, but hey, this is how it is. The heel counter is really pliable. There is a good lockdown thanks to, I think in general, I mean, the, the last that was used and the design is good and it provides with a good lockdown. But if you're expecting something really, you know, stout and very rigid around your heel, this is not one of them. This is kind of on the on the very pliable side of things. And this upper in, in general is actually a very, very positive upgrade compared to the previous iteration. And in general, if you don't know the previous iteration, because maybe this is also the case, it's a good um, upper for, for a race shoe. Um, I would, you know, probably rate it among the some of the best uppers for race day shoes. The insole is removable, it's glued, but it, you can definitely, you know, remove it if you want to put your orthotics. And I think there is enough volume in the shoe for um, orthotics. The width is on the average side. Uh, it's not narrow by any means. It's not wide by any means. It's going to work for most people with, let's say, average width um, feet. If you have narrow feet, you can probably tie the laces a bit, um, a bit more and have something a bit closer to your foot. But there is some volume. It's not a shoe that will really have your feet scrunched inside. There is a bit of volume. Let's look at the midsole. There is also some big changes in the midsole. The midsole compound, Light Strike Pro is the name, but there's definitely a different flavor to it. It is softer, it is more responsive in the sense that there is more energy releasing after each compression of that midsole. Um, but it's 
it really feels, and I have both shoes, the Adios Pro 3 on my right foot and the Adios Pro 4 on my left foot under the table. The 4 feels much softer, even, you know, statically like this, uh, like I said, under the table, but when running, it feels much, much softer. To the extent where it has a bit of drawbacks because of that softness, the second major change is the positioning of the rocker point in the shoe. Like the Evo 1, which was released one year ago, that's kind of moved the, the rocker point backwards. This also is moving the rocker point backwards, making the rocker longer and the toe spring also higher, meaning that you have more of that feeling to be propelled forwards naturally in a way by the shoe. There are still energy rods in this shoe. The energy rods basically are um, bent at 60% of the shoe to make that rocker point a bit more backwards and again to help you have that feeling of a longer and more pronounced forward propulsion in this shoe. How is it in terms of ride? Do you feel that, that difference? Yes, you do. It's uh, actually different compared to the Adios Pro 3 that I have right here. You can definitely feel that the toe spring in this shoe is um, a bit shorter, the rocker is a bit steeper, and you have a more flatter surface under your foot in the midfoot area. This shoe feels like you are really sinking in in the heel. You have lots of compression and you are really going quite down in the heel. Even if you're not really heel striking, even if you're midfoot striking, you're just a heel striker that heel strikes a bit more forward. You compress a lot that heel and then you don't really have a midfoot area in this shoe in which you spend time. You directly go onto that rocker point and onto the next stride. What are the kind of up, upsides and downsides to this? First of all, the softness is really, really noticeable. Relatively to your marathon pace or to your uh, you know, 10K pace, you have slow paces. And at these slow paces, when your um, mechanics, when your legs, when your gait cycles are a bit different, um, this shoe might not feel as good as at faster paces. It really, for me, reveals itself around half marathon pace. And I had really, really good time in this shoe around 10K and 5K paces, so a bit faster, quite faster than marathon pace for which this shoe is intended. I mean, it's a 5K up to marathon shoe, but I would probably consider it more, more as, a, as a marathon shoe, half marathon up to marathon shoe. But it felt better at, at faster paces. I feel like this shoe is quite demanding in terms of paces. The more you put into it, the more it gives back. It is surprisingly efficient around that marathon pace, despite the softness. And this is again based on two stations, so I would need to spend more time in it and race a marathon in it, which is going to happen on Sunday in Berlin. I'm going to race in this shoe and I will be able to provide you with more input, more feedback on how efficient this shoe feels at marathon pace. I was expecting it to be more inefficient because of the softness draining some energy. This is happening quite often for me when the foam is too soft. I feel like I'm losing energy and therefore moving slower or I need to put more energy to move at the same pace. I didn't feel like it was the case with this shoe. Do I think it's an upgrade compared to this foam? Yes, I I was not enjoying the Adios Pro 3 as much as some other people did. I didn't find it as um, as much as a, of a super shoe as some other people did. It's, it's not a bad shoe by any means, but for me, it wasn't a top tier shoe um, on the, on the markets. And it was probably, you know, in that second tier, I feel like this is probably bringing it closer to the first tier. But again, I would need to race in this shoe to be, um, to have a final opinion. I am not, however, blown away to the extent where I would um, put it directly in the, in the highest tier of shoes, if that makes sense. So I need a bit more time and maybe it's gonna be in that, you know, um, first tier, but towards the end of the first tier or at the very top of the second one. Give me a, a few more days and I will give you an, a final opinion after the Berlin marathon. Outsole changes as well on the outsole. Continental rubber and here we have some light traction everywhere except here under the, your, your big toe where you have some continental. The big toe is really where you have all of the you know the last stages of uh, propulsion and of kind of traction against the ground that's where it's happening and that's why Adidas put some continental rubber right here under your big toe. The rest of it is light traction and it works well. I, I didn't find any Significant difference on wet surfaces, however, so keep this in mind compared to the full continental outsole. Let's see on wet surfaces because obviously most of the issues people had with the Evo, so the other shoe that has that liquid rubber, so something, again, something different was on wet surfaces. So I'm curious to see how this works on wet surfaces and I'm not able to comment yet because I didn't run in the rain or on wet surfaces, at least with this shoe um, yet. Price point, 250 euros, 250 dollars. It's among the more reasonably priced super shoes, which is a good thing. And this is probably where this shoe can, can win to a certain extent. Maybe it's not the very best super shoe. Um, maybe it is, I need again to, to confirm uh, after a, a full race. Um, but the price point will make it a good value for money super shoe that is already 100% 
Sure. Would I pick this over the Evo One or would I pick this over the Alpha Fly or some other, other shoes? Um, I will compare it against more shoes in upcoming videos because obviously this is a shoe that you, you need to compare against other um, top racers. Thanks a lot for watching today. Enjoy your run, enjoy your ride and go beyond your limits. I will see you in the next one.